So we're moving right along with this series, and Iola also preaching a series on uh, the end times prophecy from the book of Revelation, and we're still in chapter one. <laughs> so we're making progress here, and we're a little bit behind over there, but uh, but it's going to get really exciting. Whenever I read it, I know I start getting real excited when I get into chapter six, chapter seven, and uh, it's all it's all great. But we're, now we're at a pivotal time. The uh, seals being opened, and so look there. Uh, the title of the message is uh, the new song, the new song. And there's a part there where the uh, where they're all uh, gathered together and they sing a new song. We'll get there in a second, but actually, before I go there, let me just say. If you haven't noticed yet, it seems like there's a lot of singing in heaven. <laughs> there's a lot of music in heaven. In fact, let's look at it a few things here. Keep your place there. We'll come back to you in a second. But look at chapter 4 of Revelation. Revelation 4, verse 1. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me, which saith, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Now, the first thing he sees when he goes up, when he's being called up to heaven, is the voice that's as the, a trumpet. Now, a lot of times we talk about the fact that, oh, that just means like, like when he says, lift up your voice like a trumpet. You know, maybe it's just talking about how loud it was or something like that. But I almost in my mind get this idea like the an angelic voice. <laughs> it just kind of sounds like a musical instrument. And I don't know if you've ever heard this or not, but uh, if in Ezekiel 28, I think I've probably mentioned it here before, and, and you maybe have heard it before anyway, but, but Ezekiel uh, 28 is an interesting passage where it talks about Satan and how he was a cherubim, uh, I mean a cherub before his fall. In Ezekiel 28, look at verse 13 says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, the gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets, which would be kind of like little tambourines, and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. And it's talking. This is talking about Satan or Lucifer, and and uh, and it talks a little bit about how he was in the garden and how when he was prepared, he had all these uh, like precious stones. And look, we've already looked at a glimpse into heaven and what the uh, cherubim look like. And he said that Satan was a cherub, and so these this weird uh, creature that we see, what seems weird to us anyway with the different four heads. I mean, I don't know what Satan looked like exactly, but in all the wings and, and you see uh, this description, you know, I keep going back to this description of like the lightning and all the shining uh, uh, bright colored stones and, and, uh, and all the references when someone sees a vision of, of these have to do with these, these bright shining lights and all. And uh, it's pretty interesting. I'm going to talk about that a little bit tonight in Iola, but <laughs> apparently the uh even satan you know had had this and it's interesting it talks about these tabrets and these pipes that were built within them so some have speculated hey maybe he was made to be an instrument of music which would explain a lot because i believe he has control on the music industry uh in in this world today yep. and uh, very possible man he's an expert at uh music yeah i don't know how that works exactly but i believe he probably gifts some people to be able to create music uh, there are some talented people. I don't know. I, I've never actually been into heavy metal. Like, I don't know if that was ever the music of choice whenever anybody was a kid or something like that. To me, it just always sounded like screaming and demons and stuff like that. But one time I was listening to that. I don't remember why, but uh, uh, it was a documentary or something. I can't remember, but I was listening. And I was listening to some of the sounds that this guy was making. They were like screeches, like screams. And, I'll, and in the past, I just never would have listened to it. I was just like, man, that's just, that's just who would want, who would even call that music? 
But when you really listen carefully, there were these sounds coming out of this guy's voice. And I'm like, those aren't even human, man. <laughs> what is coming out of him? And it, I don't know. This, so it's been kind of my theory, like, man, maybe Satan actually just kind of gets into these guys and allows them to create this stuff. And, and uh, who knows how he uses that. But uh, definitely think that even Satan, who probably knows music better than anybody else, of course, you know, when he fell, of course, he's doing everything he can to destroy God's people and uh, to destroy the world, really, and seek whom he may devour. But that's just some uh, thought that even the angels and the angelic beings, and all those that the Bible mentions, it seems like they're musical creatures. Look back at chapter 5 again. Revelation 5. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayer of the saints. A new song. So uh, I want you to notice that harp. We'll come back to that verse. The text. But notice he talks about harps. Uh, chapter 14. In verse 2, And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping. Okay, look at chapter 15. A sea glass or a firmament that was a, that's a that's always seems to be present when they see a glimpse of, of God on his throne and the cherubim. Okay, and a sea of glass mingled with fire, also something that's always in those visions. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name uh, stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. And so uh, what is it about these harps? It seems interesting like everybody has a harp and you've probably seen the old cartoons where uh you know uh, donald duck gets blown up or something like that next thing you know he's on a cloud and he has a harp and i remember as a little kid thinking what is the significance of that <laughs> and i don't even know what, why they would say that except for oftentimes you see god's people in uh, images and revelation and they have harps <laughs> and it's like as we were talking about that a little bit on the way up here it's like as if like at any moment in heaven, man, you could just break out into a song. So you got to have your harp ready. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, harp is a beautiful instrument, beautiful sounding instrument, but I don't know the first thing about how to play it. Uh, but, you know, however symbolic that is or how literal it is, there's these harps and there's a lot of singing. Okay, Revelation 4, 8. When he first sees uh, this vision of heaven, he begins to see uh, these people, these four beasts, and, and uh, the beasts. It says uh, in verse 8 that they rest day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. My, my family thought I was pretty corny, but I said, actually, I think it sounded like, Holy, holy, holy. They just, yeah, you guys didn't laugh either, but... <laughs> I think that's how they're singing it in heaven. I don't know, but they're saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. There's just singing like this all. Now, God's people are told to sing on earth, not even in heaven. I'm talking about when we meet together, what are we supposed to do? Admonish one another, songs, hymns, spiritual songs. And uh, so there's singing involved. Even Jesus and his disciples, after the Lord's Supper, they sang a hymn, right? There's just a lot of singing. So I hope that you enjoy singing. <laughs> I hope that you enjoy music because all eternity you're going to be singing. And you're going to love it. You're going to love it. But in our text, look back at chapter 5, verse 9. I actually had somebody one time say, like, I don't see why you think heaven would be so great. Like, what, are you just going to sit around in a cloud and play a harp all day long? And I'm like, hey, man, I don't understand, but I know it's going to be great. <laughs> and if you don't understand, if, if the world doesn't understand the, the, joy, the joy that you can get out of singing, singing unto the Lord and enjoying good godly music, they're just missing it. They'll, they'll understand it one day if they're saved, you know what I mean? But, 
But in the meantime, they just don't understand. They're just like, oh, that's just some, you know, that's some boring old fashioned music or whatever. Man, singing praises to God can really lift you up. Amen. It can really change your, your attitude and your, your spirit of worship and all. So if you don't like music, sorry, about this new song, verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou, for thou wast slain. And hast redeemed us to God by the by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So up until this point, what you've all we've seen are the angels singing holy, 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 right? And all we've seen are uh, the elders bowing down, and of course they got the harps and they got this. But well, we don't really know. Uh, so what are they just singing that same song over and over and over, just nonstop? I don't know. But all of a sudden, John says it's like now they're singing this new song. Right, he sees this, uh, uh, this 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 book that's got these seals on it, and it's kind of weird. But he starts crying, and he's saying, uh, you know, nobody, even this strong angel, he can't open the seal. Nobody can open the seal. I don't know. I just kind of think like you ever had a dream, and just like everything's like in your dream is like super emotional. <laughs> And, and I don't know, maybe it's a little bit of that, but but somehow he's just like overwhelmed by this. Like this is an important time and and nobody can open these seals. Like who's going to open the seals? And of course, the picture is that Jesus, the lamb that was slain, he's able to open the seal. And then all of a sudden they break out in this new song. And in the new song, they're singing, you know, worthy is the is the one who can open open the seal. Look at verse 11, though. Verse 11 says, and I beheld, uh, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast, and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands. Now you can try to do the math on that, but I'll I'll make it simple on you. The that amounts to an innumerable amount, <laughs> thousands of thousands. I'm like, who even knows what that means? So the Bible actually talks about an innumerable uh, amount of angels. Right, so these are just angels, and he sees so many of them, it's innumerable, thousands uh, upon thousands of angels. And, uh, and so these, these are the types of things that he's seeing around the throne. He sees the elders, 24 elders. Uh, now, there's a lot of theories as to, who, as to who the elders are and what they represent. You know, uh, my, my theory, my theory is that the Bible makes it clear that there are, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but the Bible makes it clear that there are, you know, a, there's a special place for the, the 12 tribes of Israel, right? So who, I mean, are those exact people going to be the, the ones uh, that it's talking about? Uh, I don't know. And then the disciples, the 12 disciples, there's a special place. Let's look at that real quick. Matthew 19. Matthew 19. So we're kind of piggybacking, piggybacking off of uh, the vision of heaven that we already talked about. And so now it's transferring. He sees this vision of heaven, but it's transferring into something very, uh, very special that we'll get to in a minute. But I want you to look at Matthew chapter 19. We're going to talk about these things as we see them. So one is the 24 elders. And this is just my theory. I, I'm not saying I'm, I'm right on this. But why the number 24? I got an idea. Matthew 19, verse 28. Went too far. 19, verse 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So like he literally told the disciples, hey, there's going to be 12 thrones. You're going to be sitting on those thrones, judging over the 12 tribes uh, of Israel. Look at Revelation 21. Revelation 21, starting in verse 9. And there came upon me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending 
out of heaven from God. We sang that song, Marching to Zion, and I thought, hey, we're Zionists. We're, mar <laughs> we're marching to Zion. Having the glory of God in her light was like unto stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall, wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the twelve gates, angels, and uh, the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, and on the north three gates, and the south three gates, and the west three gates, and the walls of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. So I think it's kind of interesting, those twelve tribes of Israel, you know, those are kind of foundational, and then the twelve uh, disciples, now, we know it doesn't count Judas, all right? The Bible's pretty clear about that, so maybe uh, Matthias replaces him. I've kind of always had this theory that Paul, who calls himself the apostle uh, out of due, how does he say it, uh, out of due time? Born out of due time. And so uh, there's kind of this idea that maybe he was supposed to be the one that replaced Judas, and maybe they jumped the, they jumped the gun on putting Matthias there. I don't know. But somehow there's 12. There's 12 th thrones. And so in my mind, I'm thinking 12 thrones representing the 12 tribes of, of, of Israel, 12 thrones representing the 12 tribes of, I mean, the 12 uh, disciples. And so really what you have in a way, and this is how some people, uh, this is how some people translate that, uh, interpret that, sorry, about the 24 elders. They say, well, this is just representation of, you know, all those who go up in the rapture. Anybody ever heard that? Like, that's what these elders just represent. They're just out of all these tribes, of all the people that go up in the rapture, and these 24 elders are representing them. Well, I would say that there's a representation of Old Testament saints right there, and there's a representation of New Testament saints, but what I don't see anywhere is the rapture. Now, some people say, well, chapter 4, he's like in the Spirit, and he goes up, and he's, uh, he's up in heaven, and that represents the rapture. And then they say, look, all of a sudden there's all these people... And there's, and there's 24 elders, and all these people are singing, and it says that they've been redeemed out of every tribe and, and all this. And, and they say, see, that has to be the rapture. I would say, if you're reading this in, like, the first century, you might think, like, you know, what, where's all these people coming from? What's going on? But understand, we live in 2020, and he was seeing a glimpse of something that is, is future. We're not even there yet. And he's seeing... All these people in heaven who are singing this song, and these 24 elders and all that. In my mind, I'm thinking, look, there's been a lot of people that have died, and to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord, they might not have their glorified bodies yet. We know that they don't, but they're in heaven. And so there's people in heaven right now, and they're singing to the Lord. And these elders, whether I'm right about the 12 tribes of Israel, and the, I mean the 12 uh, sons of Israel and the 12 uh, apostles, I don't know, but what I know is that there are representations from everywhere that are at God's feet singing continuously. And there are angels in heaven uh, singing continually. But there's something significant about this time right here where they sing this new song. And there's something in heaven that's just stirring. There's like this excitement building and there's like something is about to happen. And they, no pun intended, <laughs> something's, something's about to happen anyway, so... <laughs> So here, this new song is showing the events that are about to unfold are extremely important. All right, this is, this is the parts about this chapter. Like, what's so significant about this? What's, what's this new song? What's well, getting ready to show us that something significant is going to happen. <laughs> you realize that ever since, you know, all throughout the Old Testament, they knew this day was coming, the day of the Lord. All, all, all these things were coming to pass. But not just that. Daniel's prophecy, I mean, makes it clear that these things are going to happen. Look at Daniel 9 real fast. I mean, this is the 70th week about to happen. Daniel chapter 9. I know dispensationalists would take this and read more into it than I think is there, but look at verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, he's talking to Daniel, and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make recon uh, uh, reconciliation for iniquity and everlasting 
righteous and to seal up the vision of and prophecy and to anoint the most holy know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem unto the Messiah the prince shall be 70 weeks and three score and two weeks uh, let's see 70 weeks three score and two weeks uh, let me see here the street shall be built again sorry I got distracted and the wall even in troublous times and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people and the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And uh, in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation, uh, and the de and the determined and that determined shall be uh, that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Now, if you remember, after Daniel had all these visions, the angel said, "Hey, shut these visions up. Like nobody's going to know about these, right? Until the until the latter days." And so, in Revelation. He's revealing all these things that Daniel's been been holding on to. Man, Daniel was like weeping, saying, "I don't understand what these things mean," you know. And and the and and the angel uh, told him about it, but then he said, "Hey, shut these things up." When we get to the book of Revelation, these things are unfolding, and we're starting to see how they're coming. And and whenever we see this uh, this scroll and this the diff, the seven seals on this scroll. Look, you don't know, we, we already know because we've already read the book of Revelation, but at that time he's seeing this and all the angels are singing and they're excited and something's going on. He's like, man, this is a very important time. And so all of a sudden they began to sing this new song. Something, something special is about to happen. Think about this. You would know at that time, if you knew the, the 70th, 70th week of Daniel is upon us, I don't care if you're if you're pre-trib, post-trib, whatever. If you got to realizing, hey, at this time there's only seven more years until Jesus sets up the throne and the millennial king kingdom is ushered in. That's pretty exciting, isn't it? <laughs> you're like seven. All 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 we know is seven years. Just got to endure seven years, you know. If I mean, how, however that goes. Obviously, we believe in the rapture, and we know we're not going to be here for seven years. But all you know is that, hey. Whatever's happening right now, we've got exactly seven years until the kingdom's setting up. You'd be singing a song. You'd be excited. You'd be like, it's finally here. You know, 6,000 years, however long the earth has been in existence, it's all been waiting and groaning for that day whenever Jesus comes and sets up his kingdom and, uh, and all, uh, you know, kingdoms of the earth are subdued. And so uh, this is a special time. And so they sing this song. Now, here's an interesting thought that, again, some people don't understand because they think that the rapture happened, all of uh, uh, the saved have already gone up to heaven, and that's what we're looking at in chapter 5 there is what people say. And so what, here's what they miss is that when this new song is being sung, I believe that there's a lot of people who won't be there singing that song. Now, I'm, I, I, I'm not going to deal with it now. We're going to deal with it in the coming lessons, but... In the next chapter is when these seals are going to be broken open. And in these seals, it's evident that there are some saints of God, some believers who are going through some serious tribulation, some times of trouble and persecution and all. So you got some people up in heaven saying, oh, this is good, man. Everything's coming to an end. It's about to happen. And they're singing this song. And then you got other people on the earth, you know, and they're going through uh, some 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 tumult for sure okay and it isn't until the seventh seal is open that the wrath of God is going to be poured out upon uh, upon the rest of the world okay so so these people that are not going to be in heaven singing the song at this point but are actually going to be going through this tribulation here's what I want you to notice look at Revelation chapter 15. Revelation 15. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, 
for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall, who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And after I looked, and behold, the uh, temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened, and the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girt about uh, with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave uh, unto the seven angels seven golden vials, full of the wrath of God, who live forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from His power, and no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. Now, probably we're all on the same page here, but if, if, if you are just totally lost and you don't know what's going to happen in those seven seals and everything, we're going to get to that, okay? But the part that I want you to understand is this. There's going to be some singing in heaven while others are going through the tribulation. But there's one thing for sure. After that tribulation and after all God's people are removed from the persecution and everything that's going on this earth, we're all going to be singing. And it's interesting that it says they're going to sing the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. Now, what's the song of Moses? Well, look at Exodus 15. But what I think about whenever I uh, think about in heaven, everybody singing the song of Moses, I almost feel like Moses himself will be the song director. I don't know. <laughs> he'll get up there and he'll say, all right, guys, I'm going to lead you in my song. And he sings uh, this song. Some have, uh, some have pointed to a different song of Moses, uh, but I think it's talking about this song right here, Exodus 15. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him in habitation, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariot and his host hath he cast into the sea. His chosen captives, captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. Thy right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. And in the greatness of thine excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sendest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters are gathered together. The floods stood upright as in heap, and the depth were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy... Uh, said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil, my lust shall be satisfied upon them, I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Then thou didst blow with thy wind, the sea covereth them, they sank and led in uh, the mighty, uh, I'm sorry, they sank as lead in the mighty waters. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness? Fearful in praise, praises, doing wonders. Thou stretchest out thy right hand, and the earth swallowed them. Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. The people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold on the inhabitants of Palestina. Uh, then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, shall take hold upon them, and all the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Fear and dread shall fall upon them. By, thy greatness, by the greatness of thine arm, they shall be as still as a stone, till thy people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over, which thou hast purchased. 
Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountains of thine inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, <clears throat> which thy hands hath established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. For the horse of Pharaoh went in with his chariots and his horsemen into the sea, and the Lord brought again the waters of the sea upon them. But the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. Now, it might not sound like a super exciting song, and I don't know what it sounds like, or how it's going to rhyme, or what language we're going to be singing it in. But uh, this is a song. And uh, Miriam and the, the prophetess after that, she comes and she's got her uh, timbrel in her hand. And all the women go out after her with the timbrels and with the dance and kind of repeats that chorus and says, Sing ye to the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his riders had he thrown into the sea. And there's this time of praising that Moses is leading all the people in this song. And they're, and they're excited and they're joyful. They're, they're, they're jumping up and down. They're, they're happy, okay? Well, what just happened? Their enemies had chased them down. They had been in bondage. They had been doing all this. And now they're pursuing them and they're trying to kill them. And the, the uh, children of Israel are running for their lives. They're scared. They pass through this Red Sea, a miracle of God. He gets them through that. They get onto the other side. And once they are delivered and they're on the other side, what does God do? He allows the water to destroy the enemy, the, the uh, Egyptian uh, army. Do you see a correlation there between what happened in the days of Moses and what's going to happen in the tribulation? All right, so God's people are running from those who are hunting them down, you know, persecuting them, you know, trying to, uh, uh, people turning them all over. You know how Matthew 24 uh, it, it gets really specific on that, or 20, let's see, actually, uh, well, yeah, 24 does, and he's talking about how people are going to deliver them up, and and uh, and so there's going to be this heavy time of persecution, uh, you, you understand the whole mark of the beast, and we'll talk about that as we get there later on, but they're, you know, they're trying to force this on people, and you look, we don't understand what that's going to be like exactly, you know, we can have some theories about how we're getting close and what the mark of the beast is and all that kind of stuff. We don't know how it's going to happen. But here's what we do know. Times are going to get rough. People are going to be persecuted. There's going to be a time of famine. There's going to be wars. I mean, the Bible says this. It's not hidden from us. It's, it's not a secret. We're going to go through all that time. And during that time, guess what? People are in heaven rejoicing, singing a new song saying, Oh, this is it. It's finally coming to pass. You know, this is what all history has been waiting for. This is the, the very end. This is the last of the last days, right? Seven years. And, of course, uh, our persecution goes, we'll, we'll lay this out more in future lessons, our persecution goes three and a half years, and then we're gone. And then God's wrath, what happens? Just like the children of Israel, they get through the Red Sea. Now they're through, right? That's kind of like... Us getting through that time of tribulation, and immediately after the tribulation, what happens? All right, we're up in heaven, and once we're up in heaven, all the enemies of God are on earth being destroyed, and we're rejoicing. You say, "Oh, I, don't, I just don't understand. How could we be rejoicing in heaven while people are dying?" Well, because God saved the people out of some very nasty times, and He cleansed uh, He cleansed the earth of all those those last people. It's weird that He's going to have to do it again after the millennium. Uh, that's another story. But but He He God does this over and over in the Bible. Uh, look at all the way back to the time of Noah. He cleanses the earth of the wickedness. And what does He do? He puts uh, Noah and his family on the ark. They get through that, you know. And meanwhile, once as soon as the the day that they enter into the ark, what happens? You know, the storm, the water starts coming down and it ends up destroying everybody. And so really the Bible is, is, is pretty amazing in being consistent all the way through how these things are going to happen. But there in, uh, in chapter 15, when he sings the song of Moses, then they also sing uh, the song of the Lamb. And I think it's pretty interesting. It's almost like we're being all reminded that what's happening to us is the same thing that's always happened to God's people. There's a time of persecution from the wickedness. And what did Jesus say? It's not you that they hate. It's me that they hate. They hate Jesus. They hate God's word. And so they'll persecute Christians and everything and, and, uh, and, and allow all kinds of wickedness to go on. And you know what? After we're gone, 
and God pours out his wrath on them, the Bible says over and over they still don't repent. They still don't change their ways. They still don't believe any differently. And so they have to be destroyed. And so he destroys the whole world before he sets up the kingdom. It's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. But I just want to read that chapter and uh, talk about that new song. And here's just a, a couple just remarks to make about that. Number one, as I already said, you better learn to enjoy music. <laughs> learn how to express yourself in music. You say, well, I just don't know how to sing. Well, learn how to sing. <laughs> the more you do it, the better you'll get at it, right? Sing. Sing sing on your own. Sing in the shower. Good songs. Not the old, uh, not the old songs from your past. <laughs> sing songs about the Lord. And uh, uh, because, because we're going to be expressing our joy throughout all eternity, I believe, through singing uh, in such a way. And then this, no matter what we go through on earth, you know, times get rough. If they get rough for you personally, or if they get rough for this church, or they get rough, you know, for God's people as a whole, when the tribulation comes, uh, know this, that the children of God will get the victory through Christ. Amen. Right? We will have the victory, man. Just keep the head up and keep pushing forward. You will have the victory. And then, last of all, the closer we get to the end, the more exciting we should, excited we should be as Christians. I mean, I don't understand some people as Christians, they talk about this, oh, I just can't believe the times that we're in, and oh man, don't you know they're going to make us uh, get vaccinated, and they're going to do all this stuff, and the next thing you know is going to be the mark of the beast, and it's almost like they're just like, oh, I'm not ready for this, I don't want this to happen. And I'm not saying I want persecution to come or all that, but I get excited. And I'm like, it might not be here yet, but this is just proof that it's just getting closer and closer and closer. And if I knew when that day starts, hey, man, this is the 70th week. This is the beginning of the 70th week. I'd be excited. I'd be jumping for joy thinking countdown begins seven years and, and we're in the kingdom. Right. So. Uh, so anyway, let's pray. Father, thank you for the truth and the confidence that we have in you, the hope that we have. Uh, that we will uh, one day be victorious, and uh, it's all through you, not by our own doings, uh, but that you will get us through as your people, uh, and we will spend eternity praising you and uh, enjoying ourselves in a way that certainly we've never enjoyed ourselves on this earth, and we've never known a time where we're in sinless bodies, glorified bodies, and we can actually... Uh, uh, serve you the way that you were meant to be served. And uh, we can enforce laws on this earth that were meant to be enforced. And we can see how things are going to be done, Lord, when people are made to do them your way. And uh, we don't understand it now, but we see uh, in heaven people singing, uh, people being excited, people being happy about all these things that are going to be fulfilled that you promise since the very beginning were going to happen, Lord. Even back in Genesis 3, that the, uh, the seed of Satan will be crushed. The head, head of Satan will be crushed, Lord. Yeah, I know you'll do it through, uh, through the work of, of the church as we fulfill what Christ has for us to fill. I pray you give us strength, Lord, when times do get rough. Uh, we certainly seem uh, spoiled right now as Christians. Uh, but as times do get rough, give us strength, give us boldness, and uh, give us wisdom as we serve you and uh, look forward to the day that we sing that new song in heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.